The Future of a King by Nathaniel. Chapter 7 When My World Began to Change. On the first fine day in early spring, Uncle Merlin and I were riding through the forest together. I had been restless after the winter confined inside the castle, and he had been quite ready to get out into the woods as well. So we had taken a long gallop through the forest and were riding back off to the castle in late afternoon when Uncle Merlin suddenly drew his horse to a halt. I followed suit, surprised and about to ask why when I noticed how tense he had become. Is something wrong? I whispered, putting my hand on the hilt of my sword I carried in my saddle. I'm not sure, he replied back. I feel as though something is changing forever. I frowned, not certain why that feeling would be, making Merlin scan the trees around us as if he had expected a threat to appear at any moment. But it certainly did not make me feel safe. The slight crackling of footsteps of a man walking slightly broke the silence and made me draw my sword. Uncle Merlin slipped quietly off his horse and looked ready to throw a spell at the slightest twitch in the bushes. Abruptly, two bushes parted, and a dark-haired man in chainmail and a dark cloak emerged. Merlin! he exclaimed, eagerly stepping towards him. Uncle Merlin's eyes grew dark. But rather to my surprise, he took a step back instead of attacking. Lancelot, he said uncertainly, before muttering to himself, what is bringing you back this time? I looked towards the, at the new man with a great interest, since I didn't understand Uncle Merlin's second line at, at all. I knew the stories of Lancelot, of course, but I'd never dreamed I'd see the brave, noble knight myself. As he was supposed to be dead, I began wondering if I was dreaming. He had apparently heard Merlin's muttered question, for he looked quite ashamed and raised his hands in the air. I am not brought back like a, from the spell this time. He said intently. Frey said my time had come and sent me back. Uncle Merlin turned very pale. F Freya? He faltered, supporting himself with one hand on his horse as if he was afraid he would fall. She told us that King Arthur would leave the Knights of the Round Table with him when he returned, Lancelot told him, as I was the first to die, so I am also the first to come back. He smiled a bit to himself as he lowered his hands. She has worked long and hard to enable us to return at all. My heart was springing with quick joy at the thought of seeing Gwen and Uncle Elian some time as well. But why would they come back now? Father certainly had not returned yet. Uncle Merlin was staring at Lancelot through narrowed eyes, and I could tell well enough that he didn't believe him at all. Lancelot sighed slightly. I know you don't believe me, Merlin, he said quietly. I am so, so sorry for everything I did as a shade. Merlin drew a tired sigh and ran one hair through his hand, thinking, that certainly wasn't your fault, he returned. Look, are you saying that Arthur is returning? Soon, yes, Lancelot answered firmly. Freyus says the time of his return is swiftly approaching. He's quite impatient, mind you. Uncle Merlin's eyes grew very large in his colourless face, and he scrubbed both hands right, roughly through his hair. Arthur's return, he muttered, distractedly under his breath, but I was near enough to hear him. What is he trying to do? He stared up at the treetops, and for an instant I could see an intense longing across his face. I knew him well enough to know if he'd give anything for father's return. And the fact that Lancelot treated it as if it was coming swiftly was confusing me as much as him. I was growing more excited by the minute. However, I could see that not Uncle Merlin's hesitations with Lancelot, for the thought of my father and all his closest knights back in Camelot sounded like heaven to me. Lancelot was watching Merlin with what I thought was compassion. Merlin suddenly looked back at him. Do you remember all the old tricks I used to get up to? He asked. 
looking both pained and sympathetic, Lancelot replied at once. Of course, you had a habit of saving us with them behind everyone's back. Except yours, Uncle Merlin muttered. Well, they got him closer to reality than this time, at least. Look, Merlin, Lancelot said suddenly. I am telling the truth. It was Freya who realised she could send the Knights of the Round Table back with Arthur, and she created a corner of Avalon, I guess you could call it Limbo, where we have been staying for the last years. And now enough of a threat seems to be coming that she can send us back. Uncle Merlin watched him with fierce longing in his eyes. Suddenly, he came to a decision. Lancelot, he said firmly, I forbid you to tell anyone of Arthur's return for now. He took the reins of his horse and held them out. In the meantime, we return to Camelot. Lancelot took the reins hesitantly. What can I do to make you believe me? He asked softly. Nothing for the moment. Uncle Merlin replied briefly, coming over to my horse. He added to me, I need to ride back with you. Much to my embarrassment, I was still small enough that I could ride double with most people without tiring my horse too much. I nodded. Uncle Merlin swung up behind me, muttering about not knowing why his dearest dream had been turned into a nightmare. The ride back to Camelot was tense and quiet. The strain between Merlin and Lancelot made it very uncomfortable. So to break the silence, I said as suddenly, I am Prince Amar of Camelot. Uncle Merlin stiffened behind me and I wondered if he had wanted me to say that. Uncle Merlin looked at me again. Lancelot gave me a small smile though. It is an honour to meet you, your highness, he said gracefully. And there had been nothing more to say after that. The ride seemed to take forever, even though it couldn't have been above half hour. When we reached the courtyard, the only person in it was Uncle Percival, and he stopped short and stared when we came riding in. Uncle Merlin dismounted quickly behind me, riding almost before I'd stepped off my horse, and hurried over to him with a quick word. Then he turned and rushed quickly towards the stables. Badly confused, I slipped off my horse and followed him, leaving the two knights to greet each other. Merlin was standing motionless with his head resting against one of the posts in the stable when I reached him. I could never remember seeing him so defeated. Uncle Merlin? I asked hesitantly. I watched him die twice, he murmured, hardly to me. I can't, I can't watch him die again. He spun from the post with sudden determination and began saddling one of our swiftest horses. What are you doing? I asked, shaking my head. I have to get to the bottom of this, he said feverishly. I have to talk to Freya. You don't believe him? I pressed. I want to, Merlin said quickly. I want to so much. But this could easily be a trap, and I can't go through that again. He grabbed his horse's reins and swung up. Amar, he said firmly, looking down at me. You must not let your mother and Lancelot be alone together until I get back. Understood. I stared at him, lost, understanding nothing, but he looked desperate, so I simply nodded. Uncle Merlin nodded back to me, tightened his hands on the reins, and rode from the courtyard at a gallop. I was left behind, utterly confused. Since there seemed to be nothing else to do, I meandered up the steps in search of this mysterious Lancelot. I found him with Leon Percival and mother just inside the walls, and near as I could tell, he just finished giving the explanation he had given Uncle Merlin in the woods. Mother's hands were over her mouth, her eyes wide. Arthur! Arthur is coming back soon? She whispered. I am not sure how soon, my lady, Lancelot said steadily, but he will be back before long, he paused, on, looking uncomfortable. I'm very sorry for all the grief I caused to you when I was a shade, he told Mother. The bracelet I gave you was enchanted. You were not in control of what you did it then either. Mother's eyes filled with tears. It was not your fault, she said steadily. I forgive you. Then she added hastily, excuse me, and hurried from the room. 
Well, that fulfilled the mandate of her and Lancelot not being together. I was beginning to realise that I was missing a very major part of the story, however. I had never heard of shades or enchantments, and what Uncle Merlin had said about Lancelot dying twice still made no sense to me. Clearly there was a story here, and they had never seen fit to tell me. Uncle Leon, Percival, and now Lancelot had begun talking together like old comrades catching up after a long absence. But I drifted away, uncomfortable, until Uncle Merlin said this ex strange occurrence was safe. I disliked it as well. As time wore on, however, I began to guess that he had tasked Aunt Uncle Percival with keeping an eye on Lancelot, as he never left his side. We had finished a belated meal. Mother, me and these three knights were sitting in the dining hall when Uncle Merlin returned. It had been a very uncomfortable meal, as I was on edge with the situation, and neither Mother, Uncle Percival or Lancelot seemed to be at ease either. Only Uncle Leon seemed to bring some sense of normality to the meal, and he was not very successful. When Uncle Merlin appeared in the doorway, though, the confusion of earlier seemed to have left him altogether, and his face was shining in a bright hope I had never seen in him, and he was smiling through tears in his eyes. We all spun to look at him. It's true, he said, sounding sunned and turning, watching Lancelot. I'm sorry I doubted you. It's all true. Lancelot smiled, relieved, and once again took a step towards Uncle Merlin, who came quickly into the room. This time they hugged each other tightly for a moment. I'm sorry I it had to be me to return first, he said. I know that you would doubt me. I am so glad you're back, was all Uncle Merlin said. It's all true, Mother asked suddenly intent. Lancelot is really back this time, and Arthur is returning. I talked to Freya, Merlin said, a wistful smile touching his lips. She really did it. She found a way to send the round table back with Arthur. She can't tell us when, of course, but Arthur is coming back soon. He said the last words slowly, as if he couldn't believe them himself, but his smile spread wide. Mother gave a quick, delighted gasp and hugged me abruptly as if it was the only response she could think of. Arthur is coming, she said unsteadily, smiling with a sudden hope. He's coming back! Uncle Percival, meanwhile, had turned to Lancelot, smiling. It is very good to have you back, he said sincerely, extending his arm and Lancelot clasped forearms with him. It's very good to be back, he said earnestly. I had forgotten how much I missed seeing you all face to face. You've seen us otherwise, Uncle Leon asked, but the edge of the atmosphere he had gone earlier, and his question was simply curiosity. Lancelot chuckled. Freya has ways of making the surface of the water show places we could not be, he explained. She couldn't do it all the time, or else we would have spent all our time watching you. But she showed us what she was going on in Camelot quite frequently. He turned to me with a broad smile. Arthur has told me to tell you that he is very proud of you, Ma. he said. He couldn't believe he had a son when we first watched Gwen tell Merlin. He wishes he had been there to raise you, that he's been watching your progress intently for years. He must have told me ten times that you are not to forget me to tell you he is proud of you and loves you. Strange as the method was, this was by far the most direct contact I had had with my father in my life, and to my embarrassment I felt myself tear up. To make the father I'd never known proud of me had been the goal of my young life, and to know for certain that he loved me. Arthur told me to tell you, Gwen, that he is more in love with you than ever. Merlin looked at Lancelot as he turned to look at Mother. I could tell Uncle Merlin was watching him very intently as he said the words, and remembered what he had hinted vaguely once about Ma Lancelot caring for Mother, but there was no sign in the new knight's face as he words were difficult to say. Merlin, he added, he says there was nothing more he could have done, and to tell his best friend that he's an idiot. There were tears in Mother's eyes now, too and in Uncle Merlin's, although he chuckled a bit through them. Lancelot turned to the other two knights. 
Arthur said to tell you that he is so proud of the way you have stepped up to help the kingdom and lead the army in his absence. But by that time, Freya was getting impatient to send me back, and the rest will be back to say what they want me to say soon. So I am not overloaded with other messages, except that Ilian says to tell his sister that she makes the finest queen he has ever seen. And Gwen, Gwen made sure to add that we all owe him a day in the tavern as soon as Freya lets him out of a lake disappointingly lacking in anything alcoholic. There was laughter through the tears in everyone's eyes. The rest of the evening was much lighter. We sat around telling old stories of the day of Arthur's reign, talking over the important details of events that Lancelot had been seen through in the lake. To me, Lancelot being there with us felt as though a piece of Camelot of my life that had always been missing had slotted back into place and I was content. Your father is proud of you and he loves you. I repeated the words in my head a thousand times, a backdrop to the conversation. I still smiled every time. The following day, however, I went to Uncle Merlin's chambers when I knew he'd be alone. What happened with Sir Lancelot? I demanded immediately. He looked up at me. What do you mean? He asked, used to my abrupt entrances. Something changed between the day you told me he died and when he came back. I said, how could he have died twice? Uncle Merlin sighed tiredly and waved me into a chair. You know, I told you someone became between your parents before they were married, he said. I nodded, frowning. It was a point he had never glossed over in the, fan in the stories, but he never said who, and Mother never talked about it either. Merlin rested his head on one hand and stared at the sunlight streaming through the window. Morgana pulled Lancelot back into the world, he said quietly, not as a living man, but as a shade. She sent him to Camelot to make Gwen show affection to him and thus betray Arthur. Gwen and Lancelot had been close at times in the past. He sighed and turned toward me a bit. I still don't believe Gwen was in her right mind any more than Lancelot was. She wasn't, I said quickly. Lancelot apologised to her yesterday and said the bracelet he gave her enchanted her. That would explain it. Merlin said, the tone he used when he discovered a mystery. However, driven by the enchantment, they kissed each other. Arthur was furious and banished Gwen. Lancelot died a second time. I took him to Avalon and buried him there. His voice shook within the last sentences. I was silent, knowing him well enough to know that behind those few sentences had been a world of hurt for him and for both of my parents. Anyhow, given what had happened the last time Lancelot mysteriously returned, you can see why I was weary yesterday, Uncle Merlin added after a long moment. Of course, I agreed readily. I'm, I'm sorry that had happened. But when did Father... Merlin picked up my half query. Arthur and Gwen met again when we had to flee Camelot as a result of Agravain's treachery and Morgana's. He added with, with an effort. There had been time to cool their tempers and realise they both loved one another. He smiled a bit to himself. I nodded, unsurprised that Uncle Merlin never told me the details of this story before. It left me with one fundamental question in my head, difficult to put into words. Mother and Lancelot, there's nothing nowadays, is there? I asked at last. Uncle Merlin shook his head firmly. Your mother always loved Arthur the most, I think. She made her decision for him years ago, he said. And Lancelot has been apart from her long enough since he died. And he must have left his love behind to him too. You mustn't think for a moment that they might have betrayed your father if they were in their right minds. He told me, eyes intent. Lancelot was far too honourable for that, and Gwen truly loved Arthur. Don't let the story change your opinion of either of them. 
I won't, I declared. I knew well enough from the tales that enchantments could change one completely. I smiled at Merlin and got up. I had walked to walk to the door before I gathered the courage to ask my other question. I said it without turning around. Do, do you really think father is coming back? The words come in a tremendous rush. But when I turned, I knew Uncle Merlin had understood. His eyes were bright and he smiled wistfully. I knew the answer before he even spoke. I had never dared to think Arthur might return this soon, he said softly, meeting my eyes. But Freya and Lancelot would not deceive us. He stood up and came and put his hand on my shoulder, that unfamiliar hope a light on his face. Your father, he said steadily, will come back soon. Having Lancelot back in Camelot turned out to be delightful. He was a very noble and chivalrous man, not to mention swifter the sword, and he taught me as much about nobility by his steady example as he did about sword play when he joined our training on certain days. It wasn't long before I started calling him Uncle Lancelot. <laughs> Although Uncle Merlin certainly told me how Lancelot had been the first in Camelot apart from Gaius to realise that Merlin had magic and had accepted it, I never realised just how deep their friendship went. Uncle Merlin, I could tell, trusted Lancelot in a way he trusted no one else. He relaxed in his presence, especially around his magic. Lancelot was the only person besides me and with those magical that Merlin would do magic in front of without a second thought or a glance sideways for permission. Every time I saw that, it made me smile. Every two weeks, Mother held an open court, where anyone in the land, no matter how great or small, could bring appeals before her. I was sitting by her right hand one afternoon, listening to an older woman from an outlying village drone up on about how her sons were cheating her out of a decent living. She had a valid complaint, but she was stating it at such length and such boot licking I realised I was zoning out, when the steady tramp of marching feet broke into her cracked voice. Mother instantly straightened, and I racked my brain to think of any patrol that might be returning, but could think of none. A moment, Kelsey, she said to the old woman, and I was astonished that she had remembered her name. Could you step aside? Of course, Your Majesty, Kelsey answered at once, scrambling off to one side. Anything for Your Majesty. She was not a moment too soon. The throne room door was flung open so violently that the guards had to jump out of the way to not be struck by them and a group of 20 soldiers in black clothing strode into the room. Mother stood up. Uncle Merlin stepped to her side. Every knight and guard in the room was instantly alert. The group strode in perfect step up to the throne, where the leader flung a coiled scroll at Mother's feet. We come on behalf of the Saxon leader, Landon, he announced in an accented voice. He demands that all of Avalon and Albion surrendered to him, starting with Camelot. He is marching on you, with an army larger of those of five kingdoms put together, and over a hundred sorcerers as well. You would be wise to surrender, before you face a fight you cannot win. There was a stunned silence in the throne room. Sir Bedivere, a young and rather impetuous knight, abruptly spoke. Should we arrest them, my lady? he demanded of mother his hand white knuckled on his sword hilt. You fool! The leader of the black dressed man spat sharply. I am only here as a diplomat. It would be cowardly to kill me. Landon is gracious. He gives you a chance to surrender. The man spat on mother and thrust three fingers towards her. Three months, he stated. You have three months and I advise you to consider how to prepare your kingdom for another rule during this time. With that, his whole group span on his heel and they marched from the throne room in perfect synchronization. For a moment, there was a trembling silence. Then a burst of voices broke out. Uncle Ian bent and picked up the scroll that was thrown down. When he read it, his face paled. How real do you think this threat is? Mother asked softly under the cover of the babble of noise. He did not speak as a man fabricating a threat, Uncle Leon said softly. 
and what is written on this scroll seems very real. That this would explain why Queen Anise has complained of an unnatural number of men amassing near her borders of late, Uncle Percival said quietly. Uncle Merlin said nothing, but both he and Mother looked as though a great weight had seemingly come to bear on their shoulders. Then Mother grew a deep breath and resumed her queenliness. Quiet, she called out, when Uncle Leon shouted it too. The court slowly and with much muttering fell silent. Court is dismissed, Mother said clearly. I apologise to all who came with complaints. I will hear them at the same time tomorrow. I need the council to assemble at the round table at once. Dismissed! Most people were reluctant to leave, but fortunately they did. Mother turned to Uncle Lancelot, standing grimly and silent behind Merlin. Could you kindly ask Gaius to come? She asked him. I knew what she meant. We would consult him in the council with what to do when, and see how much of a threat this was. But in the end of it, it would come down to those who were left of the original round table to make the decision. Mother trusted them as she trusted no one else. This was exactly what transpired. No one thought of sending me from the room, despite the fact I was young, to be listening to discussions of this kind of gravity. But I had been listening on council sessions for years now, and it paid, and it paid off, definitely. I said nothing, however, for there seemed to be nothing to say. The talk made our position clear. We would not, of course, surrender our people to probable slavery and ourselves to death. But we might as well destroy the entire kingdom in pride. After tedious hours of council discussing the threat, the scroll, and trying to map out our enemy's likely location, when all that had been agreed on was that of a legitimate threat and we were driven into a corner. Mother dismissed everyone except Merlin, Gaius, Leon, Percival, Lancelot and me. She stood and looked at each of us. We face a near impossible decision, she said, she said quietly, strongly. But we cannot give up the kingdom. We have to fight. Slowly all those left rose to their feet to stand with her. Beginning with Lancelot, even Gaius and I stood. It is not hopeless, though, Uncle Merlin said quietly. We are not the only kingdom threatened. We have no choice but to reach out to all our allies, to anyone who would fight with us and move against the Saxons together. He drew a very long breath and stared up at the ceiling for a moment. We shall have to unite Albion. I couldn't understand why he looked so horribly broken as he finished saying this. But there was a silence for a long moment before Lancelot put it softly. Arthur may have to come back to lead it. For a moment there was a wild, flaming hope in Merlin's eyes that spread to Mother's and everyone else's. Then Uncle Merlin shook himself slightly. I shall ride to Caerleon's land at once and speak to Queen Anise, he said. The Saxons gather on her border and she is an ally. I'm sure she would agree to join us. Are you sure I should not go, Mother said, for a matter as grave as this? You will need to stay here, my lady. The people will need their queen, Gaius told her. There will be many commoners in the throne room today. By this evening, news of the coming attack will be all over the city. You will need to be seen as a strong, unwavering presence who can lead them through this nightmare. Mother straightened her shoulders and nodded. I had never seen her stronger or more queenly than in that moment. Uncle Merlin bent his head in respect. I ride at first light, he said. We. Lancelot suddenly corrected him. Merlin looked at him in surprise. Lancelot met his gaze with a small smile. You think I'd let you go off alone? He asked. You're not immortal, Merlin. He sounded as though he were reminding him of something said years ago. Given how much Uncle Merlin tended to protest in taking anyone with him when he went off on a dangerous mission, I expected him to argue, but instead he smiled suddenly, his wide, utterly happy smile. We ride at first light, he corrected firmly. Mother had a small, pleased smile on her face. Then the council is dismissed, she said. 